Hello, thank you very much for watching today. This is a video series where I talk to other digital professionals, SEO, project managers, product managers, about the issues and topics that we handle on a day-to-day -day basis. Today's topic is disability, or rather accessibility, web accessibility and video accessibility which is a rather important topic, more and more important as many people become more reliant on the internet to conduct their daily activities. We have to remember that nearly 16% of the world's population are living with some form of diagnosed disability. Many others will be living with a form of non-diagnosed disability and the rest of us will likely bump into any of the difficulties that people with disabilities will face on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Um, so a very important data that you also need to remember is that the uh, this this 15 16 percent of the world's population have a spending power of six trillion dollars so companies brands that are not catering for this segment of their target population may be leaving money on the table to discuss all this we've got here ahmed khalifa who is a senior digital professional who also speaks on the side to raise awareness between uh, to, raise, to, to, to bridge the gap between the worlds of the deaf and the hearing people, uh, particularly when it comes to videos and uh, websites. Hello, Ahmed. How are you? Thank you so much for coming on to the show with me. Delighted to be here. Thank you for inviting me. No, thanks. This is, like I said, a very important topic that I'm very much willing to discuss and help raise awareness of. That's great. I'm, I like the topic, so I'm happy to talk about it in uh, as little or as big detail as possible. So, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So, um, first of all, I'd like to know what are the main issues that you face on a day-to-day -day basis when you... Um, when you interact with the websites or with videos? What are the main things that the deaf of um, um, deaf, deaf hearing, deaf, deaf people? <laughs> hard deaf of hearing? hearing and hard of hearing, yeah. Um, everyone has their own way of describing themselves, so it's okay to say deaf and hard of hearing, for example. Um, for me, the big, big thing is about accessing content, especially videos. And uh, also, you know, audio and podcasts and audio podcasts, stuff like that. But if we focus on videos, it's such a big thing because we all know that there are more and more videos now on the internet than ever before. It's increasing. Some people believe it will be dominating the medium of content for many years to come because of social media and YouTube. So they are very, very difficult for me to access. And that gets me very frustrated because it means that I have a limited version of YouTube, for example. So anyone can go onto YouTube and think that they can access and watch whatever video that they can watch and they want to watch. But that doesn't apply to me because more often than not, they are not captioned or they are auto captioned, which in, in the deaf community, we like to nickname it as corruption. And uh, there's a reason for that because they're not that good. It has a place. It, it does have some benefit. It can be a stopgap and you can edit it afterward. But really, in general, what I require and millions of people require are manually edited, uploaded captions. And that means when you have that, I can access content, but it's just not really there yet. I mean, people always say, oh, auto captions enough. That will do. It will be fine. But Take it from me as someone who has been using captions since I could read. It's not really fit for purpose. And that's why I want to talk about it. I try to raise awareness about it because video creators, they've got a lot of power in their hand. And not only they can make it accessible for me, but so many different people in, in other spectrum, other disabilities as well. And I just want to talk about that a lot. So that is my big challenge. And I want to make people aware that by captioning your videos properly mm -hmm. you will have access to as you said this segment of a market that has huge spending power as well but they are often ignored as well so it's about time that we talk about it a bit more 
Yeah, so you're using the uh, uh, the uh, hash um, hashtag on Twitter X. I don't know how to call it anymore. Twitter X, uh, the hashtag cut the corruptions. Quite rightly, because how many times have we watched anything with subtitles and found out that they were saying something totally different? Something totally exactly. different this has um, to do with movies in the cinema, uh, YouTube videos, etc., etc. I have um, I yeah. normally use captions, and I tend to edit them manually because I find that they are not very, um, not very loyal. They don't follow through everything that we say during the uh, during the conversation, and sometimes yeah, they yeah. just make it up. <laughs> they do so many times. I've got. I like to take screenshots of some of the really bad quality or the caption that I've seen just to prove to people what I'm seeing. I've got a Word document that contains almost 100 pages of screenshots. And sometimes I just like to share it using the hashtag. You're right, Twitter or X, I have no idea. And um, just to show you that it's not enough, it's not an end solution. And it's very frustrating when people say it's enough, it will do, it's fine. But I've got the experience and I can prove it to you with hardcore evidence. And that's what I like to share when on social media, those examples. Mm -hmm. Even when I do public speaking, I like to talk about it in various conferences and I show examples. But sometimes, not only they are so incorrect, but sometimes it can be offensive. Sometimes there are, you know, things in there that can be, it could be racist or homophobic or, or, or sex or anything like that. And it's unintentional most of the time, really. But if you don't monitor it, like you do with a blog post, or if you do it like it with a, with a video or any other content, you would edit them because a lot of the time they need editing. There are some typos or mistakes, perfectly natural. But captions don't get the same treatment. They just get put there at the last minute it will do and they don't get the same love and attention like we see with blog posts articles um edited video and podcast and so on so on they get priority over caption and i think it should be the same level i think it should be respected in the same way but it's still after all these years even though technology is getting better mm -hmm. i firmly believe that technology will not replace caption because there are sometimes certain nuances certain certain things like even putting certain sound effects or certain what language is is spoken and they caption that sometimes i feel like those little things are things that only humans can do but when you depend on let's say ai if we depend on them to caption sounds it won't work and i have seen that time and time again i promise you it won't work so you're right it's a missed opportunity and uh, it's just not a solution, but I'm going to talk about it. And I'll keep talking about it until the internet is 100% acceptable. But that's a, a long-term wish and thinking, really. And this comes probably as a surprise to many, because as you say, technology is getting better. And TVs, for example, are getting better. I have read recently this article where um, it said that more and more of us are using uh, captions or using subtitles to watch TV, to watch movies, mm -hmm. really. And it's not because we can't understand the language. It's because perhaps the way um, TVs are being built these days with the... Um, speakers facing down rather than facing towards the towards the uh towards the watchers towards the um uh, towards their audience right so i i wonder do you think that in terms of um videos in terms of uh, websites do we care about accessibility when we present an mvp it should be discussed from the very beginning when people talk about websites whether it's to build a new one or to rebrand or redevelop or re, you know, migrate to a new domain or any of these things, accessibility is more often than not an afterthought when really it should be discussed at the very beginning alongside the technical SEO, the UX, the design, the content. It should be discussed in the very beginning. It will save you a headache in the long term, just like anything. If you imagine, I'm sure most SEOs will know, if you talk about 
migrating from one domain to a new domain and you don't worry about it until after it happened and you do, and you don't worry about the redirect well then it's quite disastrous it's it's quite known in the seo world that you have to discuss the redirect mapping for example if you want to change urls yeah. it's similar to accessibility it's a lot easier cheaper and quicker to implement if it's discussed in the very beginning but the trend is not there even for big companies it's still not there a, a very good example is the new social media threads by meta the big complaint is that there's not even one basic accessibility feature in there not even alt text you can't even put alt text in your images no. and we know that they are going to be working on it over time it's an mvp but not even to put like the most basic thing which really really basic alt text that's pretty poor and as far as i understand at the time of recording it's still not there because they will put it later they will put it over time but for me that's not good enough if you want people to access the content on thread well then you need to put the basic thing which is alt text and then gradually then you can become more sophisticated with other accessibility features i'm not saying it should be 100 percent accessible in the beginning mm-hmm. not really possible but let's get the most of the basic in there and then continue developing it but that's not the case in any company whether it's meta or a small agency or if you are working by yourself it's never really discussed and i, I agree it should be discussed in the beginning as much as possible yeah, because everything does help uh, towards uh, an optimal user experience, right? It's not just about titles and navigation. It's also about the ability to read those titles or the ability to understand that navigation. Sometimes we need to use assistive technologies for that. So yeah. what are the main bits, the main aspects that the very basics, they say, that we need to uh, take into account when we build a website and when we create a video. It can be a huge topic. So I can appreciate that it's quite overwhelming when talking about accessibility. So, yeah, I'm not picking 100% perfect. But there are certain things that you can think about that I would say are very important as early as possible. Uh, all text I've mentioned for images, um, be as descriptive as possible in alt text and not use it for what people had done before to put keywords in there and to spam it that's not what's there for mm-hmm. think about captioning your video if you upload any captions make sure you upload um captions it's an srt file that you tend to uh, upload in there think about the color contrast so what i mean by that is the the most let's just say quote perfect color contrast would be black and white so in most cases, you've got the white background and black text because they are very easy to read like that. But we do often see people using colors that are not easy to read. And you don't have to be blind or visually impaired to have difficulties. Even people yeah. with glasses or people who can see, they will have difficulty as well. So think about the color contrast of the text and the, and the background color. And there are lots of color contrast tools out there that will give you a ratio, is it good or bad, depending on the font size as well. That's also very important. And then there are little things that you should consider. So one thing that the um, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines say, um, along with hundreds of things, is do not use color to indicate anything. So on its own. So what I mean by that, Say, for example, you have a text that is hyperlink, mm-hmm. but it's hyperlinked by color. Now, if a person is colorblind, they will not be able to see that this text is hyperlinked. So what you can do is not only have yes different color, but also underline to visually indicate that there is a hyperlink in that text. But avoid using underline for other things. If you're not going to hyperlink a text, and you have underline there, it can be a bit confusing because the Mm. general narrative is that an underlined text means that it's hyperlink. Mm -hmm. So use color and underline to indicate that it's hyperlink rather than just color alone. A little thing like that, it can make a difference. And then finally, which can be a bit more technical to implement, if you want to test if a uh, website is accessible, try to navigate that website using just the keyboard by pressing the tab key. Now, 
that will indicate to you many things. Are they coded together correctly? Are you using heading tags correctly? Just like an SEO, are you using only one H1 and then H2, 3, 4, 5, 6 appropriately? And are the buttons coded as button? Is a button property, not an image, for example? Little things like that. If you're using semantic HTML markup, then you're making it easy to navigate the website using just a tab and the return key on a keyboard. If you can do that, it's a good step. But if there are certain parts of the website that you can't access when you're using only the keyboard, then there's something there that needs to be fixed. So you can just test it very quickly by doing that. And if you can also see like a focus ring when you press tab, that's also a good visual indicator. Those are just something that I would say is, is quite basic and something you can implement um, yourself or you can do, get developer involved. But don't leave it until later down the line because those things I've mentioned are so, so important for hundreds, thousands, millions of people around the world. Mm -hmm. But you can you can do something about that as early as possible when you are working on your website. It's basically about not confusing your audience, right? Pretty uh, much. <laughs> Um, I was wondering the uh, the legal ramifications of this, the legal implications, because it goes beyond confusing somebody. Because if, if someone goes onto a website and reads something that they need to read, saying health related or legally related for some reason, um, and they get confused by all this underlining or use of color that we are seeing is a case for you know to go to trial to go to uh to go to court just just to just just because people got confused and this is we have been seeing something that we have been seeing for the past few years in the u.s market yeah it's um a big thing in the u.s market they've got the um american disability act yeah and um that is what they tend to use if they want to put forward a legal case against a company with an inaccessible website. It's a big thing there. There are financial consequences. There are people and brands, even big brands, that have faced fines because their website is inaccessible. Mm -hmm. But some people say, okay, that's an incentive. You know, I, I want to avoid being fined. But really, you should think about doing it because you want to help people to access your website. That aside, the fact that you can get fined in America for having an inaccessible website is a major consequence. And for mm. a lot of brand, quite a severe fine. Even uh, I heard many years ago, Domino's um, got fined before. Yeah. Even um, I heard like even Beyonce's website got fined because it's inaccessible. It's just, there are so many things in there that it's just not working for certain people. So it's, it's a major thing in America when it comes to the legal and financial consequences in the in the eye of the law in the uk let's just if we focus on the uk for example there is the equality act 2010 yeah and uh, and there are things like that it's it's not as i would say as severe in terms of there are financial consequences mm -hmm. but there are there are saying in the law that you are breaking the law if you are not making your website accessible Mm -hmm. But that will be dependent on what sector you're operating in. For example, if you are a uh, government website, there have to be what in the WCAG guideline, triple A guideline, which have to be like the, up, the cream of a crop of the accessibility guideline. Because as you said, certain people in, in the country, if you need to access legal information, health information, you know, anything about the civil law, anything about that, they need to access it. But if it's not accessible, then that's an issue. So it does depend on the website, what sector you're operating in. Hmm. But that's the UK law. And every country, they will have their own theme. The European Union yeah, are right. in the middle of creating something as well. So in, in, they're in the middle of finalizing legislation. But in 2025, they will have their own European Accessibility Act. And um, that will be enforced as well to encourage all members of EU to make sure that you are being you're putting your effort in by making the website accessible i'm not 100 percent sure how that works for those that are not in the eu it's a bit complicated in that sense but in any sense even if you are not going to be facing fines or breaking the law you should still do it because it's the right thing to do 
So yes, America, you got the financial risk, and the EU, and then the UK. Every country, you have their own risk if you're breaking the law. I would. I don't want to say that it should be your main factor. Your main factor、mm. should be, I want to make the website accessible because it's the right thing to do, not because I will save money and I will not go to court. So that is important as well. But yes, having making it legal, it will. Encourage people more, so I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It is a good thing, so it's it's a it works both ways really as well. Yeah, this is not something we talk about in the UK very often, particularly not the legalities,、um, the legalities attached to not having a、um, an accessible website or accessible to everybody. Unfortunately, which is the reason why the awareness needs to be needs to keep being raised, <laughs> just simply because simply because there's there's not much about it. And unfortunately, after having worked in the third sector for different charities in the UK, major ones,、um, supports from various people and various groups only comes when it has hit home somehow, because something has happened to them. Or somebody、mm-hmm. else they know of or they love, and、uh, for exactly, yeah. Which is, and I understand that. I, I will never criticize people for saying I didn't know or I don't understand. That's okay. All I ask is to be open minded、mm-hmm. about people who are going through these things and understand from their perspective. It's not about you must know this or shame on you or I'm blaming you. Absolutely not. It's nothing to do with that. Come in with an open mind. Think about how people use the website, how they operate, because it's not as straightforward as it is for other people.、Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's just about keeping an open mind. But sometimes, yeah, you do need a bit of a nudge, and I do have to speak about it just to get to remind people again. Because as we said before, it's not at the forefront when talking about website development, improving website experience. It's not really. In a front of mind that it deserves, like other aspect of you know design and development and so on. So yeah, so I just have to keep reminding. But I'm glad that you know even you and I were talking about it. It's just another way to say to people, oh, by the way, make sure you talk about accessibility when you talk about doing anything with a website. So it's, it's very important. Do you think it is a lack of knowledge that leads to accessibility being an afterthought? Uh, when it comes to digital products, I know it's not an, an excuse, but I just wonder whether、um, knowledge and the fact that we are we keep adding things to the list、uh, of things to do when it comes to MVPs,、mm-hmm. for example, that perhaps kind of puts people off from doing. Yeah, the, from, the, yeah, there is an element of that, but that's okay because you don't have that lived experience. And that's okay. So if 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 you're not deaf, well, that's okay. You're not deaf. I mean, I'm not blaming you for not deaf. So of course you won't understand what it's like to not have access to videos. Like、mm-hmm. I can't access videos. So of course, if you know, if you don't have that awareness, experience, and knowledge, yeah. But there's no shame in that. I mean, not having that awareness and that knowledge, that's okay. We should be okay to accept that as a One is positive because you recognize it, but then the next step is what are you going to do about it?、Mm-hmm. And that is part of it. But I do think part of it as well is just the habit as well in in an everyday world. When someone think about creating videos,、mm-hmm. the habit is I'm going to create it, I'm going to edit it, I'm going to do everything there, and then it's going to put it live. But they don't think about oh, do I need captions? Or is it is it clear enough? Or is it like other little nuances? They don't really think about that, and I think part of it is just habit. You know, we don't really make it a a thing anymore, and that's why I want to make sure that okay, changing habit is a hard thing to do.、Yeah. We're humans, and we don't like change. I get it,、mm-hmm. but at the same time, just like how everyone is changing in the world, where we're talking about AI more, and we're looking、yeah. to change our habit to approach AI. Well, we're willing to do that. So then, we should also be willing to say, "Okay, I want to change my habit when it comes to being aware of accessibility." So, if you do that, then it becomes a normal habit, becomes a normal thing in your life. You talk about accessibility, you implement it, 
it's so normal that it's not really an extra effort. It's not really another long checklist. It's just another thing to make a website experience better. And I think anyone who works in digital, I'm sure everyone will say that we want to make the website experience the best way possible. Best way possible, definitely. If you talk about accessibility, that will happen, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Normalize accessibility. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah, because it's just not <laughs> normalized in in a web project anymore. It's just like, oh, it's a, a bonus feature. It's not a bonus feature. Mm -hmm. It should be an equal right. It should be a right for people to have access to the content like everyone else. That's, that's what is a normal website experience, mm -hmm. just accessing website. That's what it should be. So when you are not talking about experience, digital experience and accessibility, what do you do to switch off basically to kind of uh, refill your energy? Yeah, I do need to do that. Um, I, I do like to, you know, the usual exercise and, and I do like to play video games, but I'm, I'm a big book reader. I love reading and most of the time I would rather read books than even watch TV. And it could be anything. It could be fiction or non-fiction. It could be books about uh, philosophy or behavior, or it could be about history or science. It could be about personal development, but it could be about stories about it's some kind of fantasy forest that has a dragon in it. It could be anything. <laughs> I'm very open-minded with uh, with books, so that is my go-to approach: is to read whenever I got the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I just want to read, and I'm very happy when I have a book in my hand. Any recommendations for good books? Well, you know, this is very appropriate in this conversation. One of my favorite books, it's about uh, Stoicism. Oh, yeah. And, um, and, I, and I do read about Stoicism a lot. Yeah. And one of my favorite books on that is The Obstacle is the Way mm -hmm. by Ryan Holiday. And the long story short of it is that if you are facing the obstacle, if you have a stoic mindset about mm -hmm. when you are facing the obstacle, then you should approach it as, you know what, I'm going in the right direction. It's not going to stop me. It's not going to make me go back the other way. The obstacle in the way means I'm going in the right direction. It's going to be hard, but it's going to make me a better person and I can push through it and I'll come out the other side as a better person in the end. So it's just about using the stoic mindset on how to approach the obstacle in your everyday life, which is something that we all have. So it's one of my favorite book that I tend to reread once a year at least. It's very useful having this stoic mindset, particularly right now from since 2020, really, when you have to try and learn that the present is what you control. What you control, you control what's in your hands. It's not, not whatever it is beyond that. And that there's uh, something that you can apply to everything and everything in your life and yeah. also at work with international internationalization for example there are so many things so many variables you can't control but you control exactly. what's in your hands and when you see your hands it's xyz and this is all you actually focus on but on i mean that is one of the main rules about stoicism isn't it it's about you can only control what's in your control and so, <laughs> and and that's the best way to put it. The best easy example would be, oh, the weather is bad. Okay, well, there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, exactly. so we just react the way we should react, which is how we control. We should react, not because we're going to let the weather dictate how we should feel. And uh, that is, you're right. That is the essence of of stoicism as well. It's a really interesting topic, mm -hmm. and even though it's, you know over two thousand years old, it's yeah. still relevant very today. relevant isn't it do you have any yeah. final remarks for our audience yes if you capture your videos not only you will be making accessible to those who are deaf and hard of hearing but you also be helping people in so many different areas like for example maybe they speak a different language and it's easy for them to read in their own language mm -hmm. maybe they have learning disability maybe like i'm sure everything a person has done you want to watch your video in silence because you are in a sound sensitive environment that's something we've all done at least once in our lifetime and uh, even for children if you have a child if you're looking after them if you are a carer and they watch a cartoon or whatever with subtitles on it will improve their literacy rate as well that's true. you know that's a big one as well and I can go on. There are so many benefits of 
the reason why you should add captions to your videos. It's not just for someone like myself, but you will benefit so many other people. So basically what you're doing is here are the captions. You are all welcome to view it and you're inviting them to view it as well. So, so think about the bigger picture of how many people will benefit, not just for people who are deaf. Think about the bigger picture. I like that. I like yeah, that. It's it's an effect and everyone. a big picture. Yep. Big, big picture. The big market as well. As you said yeah. in the beginning, the big market as well. If you want to think about it from a business perspective, it's a big market. Think about that. Those six trillion dollars spending power that people with disabilities may have. Hmm. <laughs> not, not that. Not a pocket money, is it? It's a big, no, big no, not really. pile of cash. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dr. Ahmed. Thank you so much for coming on to the show today. Really, really good remarks, really good points. And I hope that you keep, uh, oh, well, you, you hope you have to stop uh, raising awareness because there's no need to it very soon. That would be a dream one day if I never have to talk about it again because it's done, <laughs> whatever that done looks like. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, I, I will stop talking about it. I, I will give you that promise then. I will give you that promise though. But I will keep talking about it because it's important for everyone. Thank, but thank you for inviting me. It's good to talk about it as well. I appreciate it. Good to talk to you too after so many years as well. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Bye-bye.